<laughs> okay, so uh, once again, hello everyone. Um, yes, uh, the the good news is that I have already something like ten thousand uh, files preprocessed. Uh, the bad news is that uh, once again uh, I had a memory crash. Uh, it's like my estimate it estimates uh, how many mem RAM memory we need for each process was a bit too low uh, because not it's it, it wasn't eight uh, gigabytes but something like twelve. I post already that in uh, that piece of information on Slack channel because I I did some some monitoring on that so it's around 12 gigabytes like uh, less than that but with the peak around 12 uh, at the moment of uh, loading all uh, models uh, science space models so uh but so i'm i'm now i'm trying to, like now i'm writing the whole documentation for the whole pipeline i'm posting that this now uh, piece by piece on uh, on GitHub, and then uh, also are transferring everything to our CoronaY GitHub, and uh, the, I hope today to run it on the, our uh, server. I mean, on our, our CoronaY server because I I, I I got finally credentials from uh, Anton to do it, and uh, yes, and uh, also with the script for Delta, uh, so for the Delta um, pipeline or how. Yeah, as I mean, like to compute, like to to figure out the difference uh, between uh, um, files that are already preprocessed and those that are not, so that uh, yeah, so that the pipeline is uh, already informed about what should be pruned out or skip over, let's say, uh, so to not repeat the same stuff for the same files. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's uh, that's everything what I have to say for now. Okay, okay, and uh, can, can you probably uh, not to load all models in the process, but but just to start with uh, uh, one model, and after you will see how it goes, because now the process is quite heavy. What it does is just uh, basically splitting on sentences, and every sentence goes to all models in cycle. Mm -hmm. You can check it. <laughs> Yeah, so, so okay. it's not efficient. It's not efficient because uh, it's consuming a lot of memory, and uh, I even think it's not necessary. Okay, so how, what's what's your proposal to to do? Like my proposal just to take one model and to do it in this one model. Okay, but the problem is that then we don't have those uh, those ontologies from for other models that are... Yeah, but like, you, you, you can just run the same script with different models. And uh, my assumption that it will be much more faster because you you will skip a lot of operations with uh, loading a lot of uh, models into memory and this kind of stuff. Okay. Uh... Okay, I, I, I can accommodate the, the code so that you have uh, options in command line yeah. Uh, or in in config file, like uh, I I need yeah just the, the four or five models because it's like sci science space large and those four other models for ontologies. Yeah, I I can do it. I mean like then we can play it out and exactly. yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, and the other thing that I'm still uh, getting error message and it's exactly the same error uh, on. Uh, it's uh, yeah. I don't know what. I, I'm providing also a Docker file, so I think okay. the best. So okay. yeah, because I wrote also. I mean, I, I have always a, a Docker file for that, but I didn't share it. So maybe once we have the same Docker file, then the problem is lo gone because. Uh, okay, yeah. can you point me uh, to a repository where? Yeah, I, I just. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, it's Docker file. Wait, it's processing this one. Uh, I'm putting this on. It's on our Slack, I think. It should be. Wait, 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 wait. COVID, Corona, Slack. Uh, in our channel, you you should have it. Um, if you mm -hmm. should go to the, wait, I, I will double check because as well as Docker file. Yes, this this Docker file. It, okay, I see it. Mm -hmm. And um, image itself, let me check. 
Yeah, but, but uh, where do you have requirements file? Uh, there's also a requirements file there. Up, wait, it should be a requirements type. It should be in Docker file to build image. Like you have this in Docker file, and in Docker file you, you have already uh, pip uh, install instant. And okay, I I didn't put like requirements file into Docker file. Okay. In Docker file you have all pip, pip installs you should have for it. I mean, like it's a stupid thing, but uh, yeah. Okay, that's good. I, I can try this. Okay, you can try. I mean, like it, like it's something that I okay. I I this. Docker file is something that I uh, modified now for now because there was some because I I take I took this uh, Docker farm from other project I put mm -hmm. only things that are necessary for uh, for, for, for like for our Corona Y pipeline and mm -hmm. now I removed something so I hope it won't make the whole uh, Docker file uh, build crash. Uh, but yeah, I can try for uh, in a moment after the the call. Uh, mm -hmm. But it, it, it would be nice also to have a Docker Compose with okay. a persistent uh, volume. Docker Compose, wait. I because will... otherwise you will get uh, all um, all your uh, results in in just a container. Okay, Docker Compose. Yeah, and Docker Compose with persistent volume. You have that. With persistent volume. Volume. Okay. Otherwise, if you'll stop and start, you will lose all content of. Uh, your... Okay. Uh, okay, good. I mean, like, not a fight. Uh, Mm. Yeah, so that's that's what I have as I mean, like it it was my mistake that it was uh, underestimate in terms of RAM. But yeah, it mm -hmm. uh, the, I, I don't think it's a problem to be honest. We just need to make it uh, work. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, but it, it's a problem in terms of time losing time. So mm -hmm. yeah, so that's yeah. that's it. And for, for us, it's now it's really critical to make it uh, finally uh, yeah. published because uh, if you saw my uh, announcement uh, yeah. at uh, the Kana with uh, our pipeline, yeah. unfortunately, it's still old pipeline, but uh, actually integration works quite well. And um, in the Kana, we already have uh, automatic uh, annotation. If you saw that. Okay, so, so uh, you just check a general channel and I published uh, mm -hmm. that it's a notation for what? Uh, okay. So basically, uh, everything that got um, labeled by this pipeline is already available in, in the dashboard where, can, where you can see all uh, proteins and uh, all uh, different. I, I, I'm, I'm reading now the Ducan, Ducano service. Okay. Yes. Yes. Ah, it's this for a notation that you, you you load a text and then you can add. So, okay. Yeah. So so you can get it uh, in a nice uh, web interface, and after people can actually verify if uh, this label is uh, really uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so people are not professional coders in the sense that they don't need to code to uh, to uh, exactly so, so it's basically for medical experts that know uh, yeah. stuff right and we as people with artificial intelligence background we don't know what they do right yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I already discussed with uh, Charlie uh, Hoyt, and uh, actually we want uh, FN to be linked also to Bell, yep. so biological expression language. So it's uh, so now we, we have two generic models, right? And uh, we want to get it uh, in yeah, Bell, I mean, and, yeah, and after it will be queryable in, in the Bell knowledge graph. Cool, I mean, uh, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, I, you're hundred percent right. That is a critical phase, and uh, we, I mean, I squat a bit. On the one hand, on the other hand, it it was like quite difficult for me to just to boil down everything to one nice co uh, piece of code and mm -hmm. uh, and to make it efficient. And uh, because I, I I didn't know that there's so uh, memory uh, hungry 
uh, I mean, the, the, I, I, I think I told you one month ago that uh, I tried uh, on yeah. my resources and uh, it's crashed because of lack of memory. Yeah, but well, actually, I, I have on, on my server, I have, I think, 146 uh, gigabytes, which is a lot, but it was not enough to, to finish the process. Okay. And it took like, like uh, I think, like 40 hours. And after I just stopped because, you know, it, it, it was not clear how much time we need actually to, to do process. And that's, yeah, but it, because but like my, my first uh, impression was okay because of those pandas and the fact that it was like, you load on all texts at once, and then you preprocess them in within the Panda data frames. Mm -hmm. That it was the cause of, of course, it was also a cause of this a huge memory footprint. But still, uh, okay, it was like uh, downgraded, but yeah. still not small enough to to like the the usage twelve gigabytes per core or per process it's yeah. still huge i mean like it's like but if you look at the instances on uh, amazon or google mm -hmm. like this you have as instances we have a lot of cpus but also a lot of uh, ram but they don't scale the number of uh, cpus and the size of ram they don't scale linearly and uh, yeah. even if it's a, a huge instance they, they have, it has a lot of RAM, but a RAM per core is something like a couple of gigabytes, uh, yeah. and not n not more than ten, I think, something like that. But depending on instance, because it's a huge number of instances, but like more yeah. or less, uh, that's why they they have so heavy, special dedicated uh, RAM instances, but they are they are relatively expensive. Yeah, and uh, for for us also, it's very important to uh, to run a pipeline right now because we already have, I think, like two hundred fifteen, yeah, thousands of uh, data uh, data files, yeah. <laughs> COVID COVID nineteen related, and uh, mm -hmm. of course we want to do processing. We will we want to uh, uh, get all all um, uh, entities from medical ontology yeah and uh, now it's not possible because uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. pipeline that doesn't work properly yeah and okay I, I, as already said i'm trying my best at this weekend mm -hmm. uh, but like still if we have some thousands of files still to press uh, outside the court 19 like those yes. uh, then we need this to is, talk we, we, this, this is exactly what i have so so i already created process how to get it uh, from uh, dataverse quickly so all this information is already available uh, however yeah. uh, notebook is not published yet but yeah it's basically it's working and i'm just waiting for a pipeline to uh, actually to start all this uh, entity recognition uh, and I, I already announced uh, <laughs> uh, i had discussion with Hachatur that uh, he can probably uh, take a look in this task but yeah. uh, but still probably if if uh, it works somehow like for ten thousand, so what yeah. we can do we can just create. It's subset. just number. It's just uh, I I know I'm just uh, curious. I mean like putting some extra things about memory to monitor memory uh, of the and, uh, and uh, Docker compose please because Docker compose. Right, okay yeah Docker we'll... already know. Yeah, so Hachatur, if you're interested, of course, it's not, not complete yet, this pipeline, but probably you can start uh, just with collection of metadata from Dataverse. Okay. And, uh, you can just run this pipeline just to see if we can actually recognize something. Interesting. Okay. Yeah? Uh, yeah can, you, can, you, can, you, can you point me uh, to, like, you said run it through the pipeline? Yeah, I mean, like, I'm just after the call, I'm updating the whole pipeline, and okay. I put, I'm transferring this to the our Corona Wire repository, and mm -hmm. I'm going to give you both links to my repository to co to put the place on Corona Wire GitHub repository where I'm tra tra going to transfer the, the, the my my repo, so to say, mm -hmm. uh, and also uh, like I'm writing now uh, some documentation so that you can figure out more or less uh, how, how it functions. Uh, okay. That's all. And I, after that, once it's finished in one or two hours, something like that, hopefully, 
Uh, I'm going also to run the delta and so the rest, 40 or 50,000, depending on uh, the rest of the um, court 19 that I didn't chance to, uh, to pre-process uh, yesterday. So it's, uh, uh, that's, that's all. Uh, yeah, and uh, Hachatur, uh, I think you already have uh, access to our labs, right? I, um, I provided uh, SSH, uh, SSH. Yeah, yeah, I, I do. I have access. Yeah, so so um, I will share you, uh, with you notebook how to get mm -hmm. uh, metadata from Dataverse, but you have to create account to get token. So you just go to Dataverse. I, I have an account. Okay, cool. So um, if you'll go in, in your account to... Uh, there is a section to get API token, and you should mm -hmm. click to generate it. And after you'll be able to uh, access all public uh, data sets. Okay, and then and then run it through uh, yeah. Lucas's pipeline. Yeah. So so you will just well, what you can do you, you can just collect everything in, in uh, separate files, right? So <laughs> like for every task, for example, to create one file with all metadata. And after run through this uh, pipeline just to see if we can actually link something from yeah. what we have. The okay. problem is that uh, pipeline at least is now hard coded for JSON file formats from Court 19. It's uh, so, in Dataverse. It's just JSON also. Okay, also you know, it's JSON, mm -hmm. but uh, the like diction, like the names of dictionary, like the, the keys for different, uh, like you have JSON. Ah, okay, co co like Cord ID. Mm. Yeah, yeah, because that's what I mean. Uh, it's like hard coded in the sense that you have a text body, so it's uh, like extracting right. text body from each JSON file, or a term, it's the, the list of dictionaries or things like that. That's why okay. what I mean. That's, okay, okay. So, so, okay, so we, can, the... we can also do a kind of a version of pipeline being semi-intelligent, and extracting all possible uh, text uh, types of uh, uh, JSON uh, entries. Like I, I can maybe try to change the processing yeah. a little bit to to do yeah. like to a, a dataverse yeah. version yeah. of the of the of the text extraction. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, because now it's like, uh, for instance, there are some when you look at. Uh, uh, court 19 JSON structure. It's many information that are not pre-processed, but just they're just uh, taken over directly, like the mm -hmm. uh, n the names of the files, uh, mm -hmm. the, the court IDs, authors, mm -hmm. things like that. Uh, so and many information like um, like uh, bibliography, etc. It's uh, skipped over. Com completely. Mm -hmm. So, but, but still, uh, in in data sets, we, we have exactly the same sections like title and after description and. Okay, uh, but, but, but still, mm -hmm. but still, yeah. it, I presume it won't work because like text body is the main key that uh, which from which I extract. Yeah. And text body, I presume, is not not for every data set in in the world. Something obvious. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And uh, just uh, for us, uh, so I would say as like like first uh, uh, first task will be even not to link to some biological uh, ontology, but just to recognize uh, geographical names, because we need to understand what kind of data uh, about which countries we, we already collected. Right. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I, yeah. Um, I think that's uh, you can we can do it with uh, a normal spacey. Yes. Uh, yes. Because, they, they, because yeah. spacey like not spacey large science large, but yeah. it's a spacey normal large. They also have entity linking and things, but like general. And then mm -hmm. you can uh, you have such a thing like geographical category or something like that. Mm -hmm. So you can extract all possible. Uh, geogra uh, ge geographical uh, names, also uh, geographical abbreviations like LA, uh, yeah. just like Los Angeles. This is, or... exactly, this is exactly what we have in, in titles and descriptions of data sets. Okay, so well, you, you can, uh, like Ukraine, like you can, it's not the yes. name of Drag or yeah, something. So, so I, I just, uh, so I, I have uh, like, like a page with Dataverse open, and uh, for example, uh, there is public. Uh, data on COVID-19 in Bangladesh. So yeah. obviously Bangladesh should be recognized as uh, and uh, then you can, and uh, yeah. Uh, 
and then uh, those things can go go directly to let's say metadata or whatever like exactly this is just uh, just uh, enrichment of metadata yeah exactly yeah so yeah and but, after, after we, we, we will be uh, able to connect with like geo geo task and we'll be able to understand uh, what kind of data we have so i i really if mike honey is listening to this call so it would be nice also to get everything like like visualized on the map yeah so we will get process that uh, will be uh, should should automatically uh, uh, visualize all new data coming to us to our data lake on the map, and it it will be just perfect because people can can see that the new informa information is available, new data sets on their country of interest, and uh, they can reuse those data sets immediately. And I think that uh, it's important that uh, then we need to switch uh, the models, like not science space large, but space normal. Like yeah, 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 yeah. Because uh, very often in science space, you have uh, geographical names as some, I, I already mentioned this, like, yeah, yeah. like uh, I don't know, uh, uh, Paris as a substance and not mm -hmm. as, a, um, as a town, uh, as a city. Uh, so or uh, abbreviation like fr in, in it's it's france let's say and not some like uh, a kind of a chemical compound or a kind of a chemical stuff uh yeah yeah that's that's important thing that okay that's like uh, mm -hmm. it's not like it's a part pipeline for just for uh geogra geogra geographical names recognition without any um uh, reference to to biology or medicine um, yeah. because... So, so I, I even think it would be it would be nice just to run uh, like part of this pipeline, uh, yeah, without uh, sky space models, just to get all these geographical locations recognized, and after probably uh, to scale with all this medical and ontology. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, mm -hmm. it, it, it would be nice to see actually how uh, how uh, performance. Uh, yeah. And other issues will, will actually uh, uh, will act in this situation. Yeah, the, the, the question, okay, is then I need to read once again the documentation of Spacey because then you have like, okay, you have you want to have just one model in pipeline for geographical names or you want just to be uh, like you have Spacey, one Spacey with 10 models pinned up to, to one Spacey uh, model uh and then just depending on precise what you want to retrieve and uh, the no, medical uh, information I, I think the best way how we can do that uh we can run different models in parallel process i think okay like we, we can create um so it will be one uh parent process and it will start like child process yeah. and in, in every child process we will we will we'll get uh different models uh, loaded I think this this performance can can actually work better in this case. Okay, it's like uh, mm -hmm. done on airflow level on a DAG. Yeah. So basically, yeah, it's airflow. So we will be able just just to connect to uh, airflow after some time, and we can see the results uh, produced by uh, this this pipeline. Okay. For people who will be actually like doing this uh, geographical entity recognition kind of like end-to-end uh, -end for let's say metadata of data sets it's not just geographical entity recognition in our case because let's say we have a data for spanish flu right mm -hmm. spanish here it means not related to geography i mean it's related but not in related in the sense that we want no, 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 it's uh, right. clearly, uh, there is disambiguation, and this is why we need to apply. Uh, or Chinese virus, or whatever will yeah. be there, for example, it's just an name. article about fake news or something. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's interesting problem. It's very interesting, and it's probably will like eventually will be used all of the information. Yeah, that's about that, that's why that's why I mentioned that you won't have five different pipelines or. Uh, just one pipeline with multiple models so that you can when you have some conflicts or competing results or results that are some uh, ambigu uh, disambiguation uh, with mm -hmm. like you need to disambiguate between them 
yeah, then you can figure out like, because actually that what was my observation that those uh, spacey bio science spacey models that okay they did uh, perfectly with those different names of chemical uh, substances etc yeah. but to recognize things like okay that the, the the name of the town is not the name of a chemical substance it's just the name of the town it's yeah. it it, is, it failed it was it, it like it's over but overfitted we, on yeah. on chemical uh, like biological chemical medical uh, names and mm. like it is general uh, skills that you expect from from a language model now yeah but, but because it was trained on specific ontology it, yeah. it will do a different job yeah obviously that, that okay mm. Okay, we need to think about. I mean, like, uh, yeah, to try. Uh, but okay. actually, the only way uh, to disambiguate is just to build a knowledge graph and uh, based on on all all relations between uh, subject and predicate, we, we can actually disambiguate something. Okay. There is only one way, and yeah. uh, unfortunately, spacey uh, itself is just like more semantic uh, distancing and. Uh, other yeah. thing but, but uh, it's not proper knowledge graph it's uh, something yeah else. i mean like uh yeah but you have a linking but it's for, for uml as uh, uh, it's it's semantic <laughs> it's different uh, thing it's not graph ah okay yeah it's like it doesn't building a, gra a knowledge graph for you yeah. can you can use like those uh, lemmatization etc to purpose things and then to use them as uh, nodes in your knowledge yeah. graphs, but you need to establish rules, your rules. Yeah, for yeah. so, so uh, relations. So basically you can recognize, uh, let's say two entities in one sentence, and you know there is some kind of relation. That and is your job. To... Because they are on distance, I don't know, like 10, so you can see probably they are highly related to something something yeah but but you don't know what kind of relation uh, between them and if you want to build a proper knowledge graph you should define this relation yeah and yeah. Also you have to link every entity to some ontology to get meaning of mm. what you actually found yeah and okay. i would say this is quite tough topic for people that using spacey because they uh, usually don't have experience with semantic web and uh, yeah. they're just thinking about some kind of semantic relation. Uh, yeah. But semantic relation is always a spectrum, like from zero to one, cause and similarity, whatever yeah, exactly. type. Exactly, yeah. And it's it's just, it's, uh, it's like it's derived from the uh, language model you use to annotate your text. So, uh, Actually, this relationship is somehow biased, like it's always biased because it comes from some data. Mm -hmm. uh, but like, uh, like for okay, once you have just one sentence, okay, you go, you can figure out or is similar or dissimilar. Then mm -hmm. when you have the ten thousand different documents and thousands of different relationships, you, you like. Yeah. And we, this is exactly the reason why uh, I'm asking actually to uh, link uh, all entities to a biological expression language because we have uh, other components in our infrastructure and uh, Indra can, can actually recognize all these statements based yep. on some uh, trained models. Yep. So they already have this information about um, relations between entities and we, we just need to extract it and uh, to put it in knowledge graph. So this is just essential uh, job to do yeah. in this case. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. I mean, like, sounds logic. Okay. So my question would be: uh, There are any questions uh, still uh, that we can answer to each other? I mean, everyone knows more or less what's the next step. Yeah. Yeah, okay, good. So we are still in contact on Slack. Uh, today I'm hoping, to, I hope to, to be able to work a bit longer overnight, your day. I mean, like for those in LA or on, I mean, somewhere on the other side of our planet. Uh, mm -hmm. 
Yes, and uh, yeah, and I'm going also to start because uh, you, Anton, you, you came late. Uh, that was something that I, I stated, like I said at the beginning. Uh, namely, I'm going to use also our Corona Y uh, credits now to to run the Delta, uh, like the, the rest of the. Uh, yeah, sure. Nineteen. Yeah, just when you see that something is happening on the server, it's it's my. I, I'm I'm going now to burn our credit points. Uh, but I, I hope it will be like once I have now a proper estimations, like like really proper estimation of RAM, like RAM usage, it, it should work and it's a matter of some hours. Even if it's like a limited number of CPUs, uh, if we won't crash, it's like 30, 40 uh, CPUs, then uh, yeah. Chance already to log in into yeah yeah AWS I'm, I'm, I'm properly. in already just I'm okay preparing. just I'm, making sure that credentials work and yeah yeah okay. uh, yeah that's that's all and if uh, and Slava if you, uh, this um, Docker file doesn't work tell me because I'm going also like to check it out because it's a new version of Docker file I removed a lot of things that are in between mm -hmm. uh, they 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 were just from another project and we don't need ja like Java in our pipeline or some yeah. other dependencies, but it's maybe there is possibility that then it's this Docker file will cache or somehow, I don't know, because I'm not Docker, Docker guy, so to say. Uh, but yeah. no, if you are not, not starting Java process specifically, it should, should be- no, I, I, I'm sure it's like, as, there is no Java process, I think, in the pipeline. Like mm -hmm. maybe some somewhere in space, but like when you install space, there's no requirements for. Uh, no, 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 I don't think. <laughs> no, no, just just saying that when it's something crashed, that because it's like something, I I, I cut off a, a lot of things uh, just to make it shorter. Okay, good. Uh, if there's no questions, so we can finish for today. I mean, like we are still. Uh, working with uh, the, the meeting is over. So thank you very much. Uh, and uh, we hear and we see uh, each other uh, in two days, like on, on Tuesday, probably. Okay. So thank you very much and good luck. And uh, if any questions, then on Slack. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. See you. Yeah. See you. See you guys.